It was the worst crisis of John Turner's liberal leadership. Twenty-two of his MPs, that's more than half his caucus, had signed letters demanding that he give up his job. But he didn't go and now claims his leadership is stronger than ever. Earlier today at Stornoway, the official Ottawa residence of the opposition leader, this conversation with John Turner. Mr. Turner, how could it get so bad that 22 of your MPs were willing to sign letters asking you to go? Well, uh, Andrew Bridge, we don't know whether 22 letters were signed to begin with. But there's no doubt that uh, there are liberals who have never accepted my leadership, despite the uh, convention in 1984, despite the confirmation in 1986. They tried last summer, and this was one last try. I believe that um, many of the members were, were manipulated. I, I say we've never seen the letters. They've never well, seen all the letters. Just on the point of the letters, you know, the senator who was collecting the letters says that there were 22 that he offered to show them to you, and you said you didn't want to see them. No one's seen them. And, uh, but why didn't you want to see them? Well, I, I say that this matter has to be taken up in caucus. And in caucus, there were only nine, ten uh, members of parliament who stood up with good constructive criticism of me and the party and the direction we were going. And uh, I think we're responding to that criticism. But uh, I'm telling you that uh, it might have been that they were told, either by the senator or by others, that... If I were confronted this way, I would go gracefully, I yield. They didn't know me. They didn't know the Liberal Party. Well, whether it was 9 or 10 or 22, I, st I still, wanna, uh, still don't understand how it could get so bad that you had to stand there in the caucus and defend questions about your own personal integrity with people who clearly know you. They work with you. They're the closest people to you, your own caucus. How could things get so bad? that you would have to stand there and defend your own personal well, integrity? I, I think there was information circling, circulating around that uh, couldn't be substantiated. And uh, frankly, I was glad that uh, it was all out in the open. Politics can sometimes be uh, a mean business, a dirty business. Well, just how much of this uh, is in the open? I mean, who, who was orchestrating this? You must have your well, suspicions. Well, I have my suspicions, and you have your suspicions. There were certainly forces outside the caucus, involved. Uh, everybody has their own feelings about it here in Ottawa. But uh, I'm dealing with the caucus and I'm dealing with the facts. I think we're coming together very well. Uh, as of now, no member has left uh, the party. No member has said he's going to sit or she's going to sit as an independent. It was a storm that blew through. Uh, these happen in any organization. They certainly happen within, op in an, uh, within an open party. What encouraged me was that the Liberal Party, from whom I received the mandate in 1984, who can reconfirm me in 1986, stood solidly behind me and in effect told the caucus that Turner is responsible to us, the party, and you are too, that the Liberal Party is bigger than the leader, bigger than the caucus. Now get back to business. Well, you describe it as a storm that passed through. It's not the first time you've used that phrase. There have been crises in the past. And I, I don't think one can underestimate what happened, not just for the impact it has within your party, but the impact it has on the Canadian voter. There's no doubt about it that uh, it wasn't helpful. As the Premier of Ontario, David Peterson, said, uh, you know, the maneuver by these members was a style of political suicide. But uh, I think the members understand that uh, it was a very dangerous exercise, self-defeating. I've also told them that if they had dealt with it in caucus, that there's never any re recrimination from me, punishment from me, or reward from me, for that matter, for what is said openly in caucus. That's where it should have been said. But why no punishment? I mean, you, you've, you've taken this line on each time, through each crisis in your leadership, that there won't be revenge. Why not? Why not now? Well, I... Uh, I mean, you've already mentioned one person involved, the senator, Pietro Mizzuto. Well, that's, I mean, uh, that, that may be another matter, because uh, we, uh, uh, the senator is co-chair of our national campaign. And uh, in that position, we need utmost loyalty and utmost dedication and compatibility with the leader. 
And uh, do you want him gone? The senator and I will be having a, a talk uh, early this week. Do you want him gone? I always like to talk to someone face to face to get the best story, the whole story, the facts before I deal with it, and uh, I'll deal with it. What about Mr. Robert? Uh, Everyone assumes that has to be a position of loyalty to the leader. Right? Well, uh, Mr. Robert uh, came in to see me uh, last Tuesday after the crisis had broken. He assured me of his support as president of the party, his loyalty to me, and I accept his word. But somebody must have been doing this, Mr. Turner. The, these things don't happen sort of out of the blue, uh, people getting together on the street corner. Somebody must have been orchestrating it. There's a lot of fingers from your own staff have been pointed at, at Robert and at Rizzuto. Well, I mean, I think the question sort of remains on the part of many Canadians and perhaps many liberals. You know, how many stab wounds can you take in your back without fighting back and getting rid of people who are out to get you? Well, I'm, I'm resilient. And uh, I think what this week has proved is that the Liberal Party is very strong and very open that we've uh, resisted this challenge, that the members of Parliament have been told by the party that they also have a mandate from the party. And uh, I think we'll come out stronger in terms of uh, direction and, uh, and policy. Uh, as I said before, Mr. Mansbridge, uh, uh, there are people who have resisted my leadership, despite the overwhelming mandates I've received from the party. They don't like change. They don't like the new openness. They don't like the elimination of the nice, nice, cozy, tidy way that this party used to be run. That uh, has left me some enemies. But one expects that. How do you expect the voters really to react on this? Let's take it outside of the Liberal Party, outside of your problems within the party. One has to assume, and, you know, voters are watching you tonight. They're looking at you, and you have to accept that some of them are saying, if he can't lead his party, how can he lead his country? The issue is, I do lead the party, and it's the party across the country that has responded, supporting me and telling these members of parliament, get back into line. So I say to Canadians, the Liberal Party is in good shape. I also say to Canadians, um, yes, it's been tough. It's been a bad week. Uh, some of it, you know, hurts personally. But uh, isn't this the kind of leadership you want for Canada in dealing with the United States or dealing with the tough issues facing the country, meeting it head-on. And uh, that's the type of leadership. Uh, the only reason, frankly, <laughs> I put up with some of this every once in a while is because I believe in Canada. I believe I've got the right vision for the country, a sovereign, independent, self-reliant, competitive country. That's why I'm against the trade deal. That's why I want the quality of life for Canadians to improve in terms of equality child care, quality of the regions, narrowing the gap between rich and poor, uh, cleaning up our environment. If I didn't care so, so damn much about that, I might have said, ah. What would have happened if you had said, ah, I'm going? What would have happened to your party if there was a leadership convention right now? <sighs> and did that go into your thinking? Did yes. You uh, uh, my first thought is for the country, that's what public life is about, Canada. I mean, I wouldn't do it any, for any other reason, but the party too. We had two democratic conventions. There was a legitimate process that put me here as leader and confirmed me as leader. That's very important to democracy, that that process be respected. No members of parliament have a right to override that. On national issues, on Meech Lake, on trade, by force of circumstances, I'm probably the only linchpin that is holding the party together on these two very difficult issues. Uh, if I were to voluntarily leave at this stage, the party might be divided not only in terms of personalities, but in the terms of issues. And I felt that I had a duty to stay for the party, to fulfill the mandate that liberals gave me everywhere. We talked about how the voters might perceive this. Clearly, the opposition parties are going to try and take advantage of this. You know, one of the things you want to run an election against Prime Minister Mulroney on is on the trust factor. One can almost assume that the Tories or the NDP will be running commercials that say, with your picture there, if his own caucus doesn't trust him, 
why should you? Because his party trusts him, because he believes in Canada. As for the caucus, there are 30 or 40 or 50 conservative members rumored to be against the Prime Minister on the Official Languages Act. Mr. Broadbent had his British Columbia wing turn him down on Beach Lake. These issues are difficult. These issues divide. It's up to me and other political leadership in this country to try to unite. That's why I'm staying, and that's why I'm going to continue to pursue an effort to present a program to Canadians in the next election that last, we can accept. Last point. You know, it was clearly the, the worst crisis, the most difficult crisis of your leadership. Surely there was a time that you had to consider stepping down. Never. Not for a moment. Not for a millisecond. Mr. Turner, thanks very much.